Hello, calculus students. Um, we're looking at Unit 7, Free Response Question Step A today. If you could refresh your memory and read this problem again of this filling of vat with some solution. Uh, so let's see, a large vat is initially filled with a salt water solution. A solution with a higher concentration of salt flows into this vat and solution flows out at the same rate. The number of pounds of salt in this container at time t minutes is modeled by some function a. That satisfies the differential equation. So given some function a, the number of pounds of salt, this is the derivative d of a with respect to t. Okay, uh, let's see. At time t equals 10, the vat contains 50 pounds of salt. So we know that A of 10 is equal to 50 pounds. Okay, we're given, we have a function A, we're given DA DT, the derivative. Okay, uh, first of all in part A, which is worth two points here, we need to write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of A at time T equals 10 and then use that tangent line to approximate the number of pounds of salt at time equal to 12. Okay, so we have to find an equation of a tangent line for that function a. Alrighty, please notice that if dA dt, the derivative, is 6 minus 0 0.02a. This is kind of strange because that derivative is given in terms of a, that's an output, rather than an input that represents a function a, then dA dt at time equal to 10 would equal, let me use that function for the derivative, 6 minus 0 0.02, again that's an output, a, and let's see, when I input 10, my output is 50 times 50, which is equal to, what is that, 6 minus 0 0.02 times 50, which is 1, and that gives me 5. What is that? It's the rate of change, it's the derivative, so for my equation of a tangent line, that is the slope. And Remember that we have a point, input 10, output 50. Output 50. Okay, so that gives me an equation of a tangent line. The equation of that tangent line, then, with a slope of 5 and a point 10, 50, is y minus 50. y minus y is equal to the slope times our variables in terms of t here, t minus 10, or do you like to write that as y equals 5 times t minus 10 plus 50. That implies that y, if I want to uh, use that equation of the tangent line to approximate the number of pounds of salt at 12 minutes, that means y of 12 will equal whatever 5 times 12 minus 10, which is 2, plus 50, which is 60. Okay, let's see where points are accumulated here. So, we see that using the equation of our tangent line, oops, a of 12 is approximately 60 pounds of salt. Alrighty. You did earn one point for a correct equation of a tangent line in any form. And you did earn one point for the correct approximation. The graders notes did say that this needs to be approximate since you are using a tangent line to approximate a function value. Alrighty, so that approximate is necessary. And there's your two points. Okay, read, please read part B. And we need to show that actually our function a of t is 300 minus 250e to the whatever, and that show that that satisfies the differential equation. Remember, that's a function, that's an output. 
with initial condition A of 10 is equal to 50. Okay, think about that for one moment. Okay, let's see where the three points would be earned for this portion of this problem. Show that this function satisfies your differential equation with those initial conditions. Well, first of all, they're giving us the function. They're giving us the solution to this differential equation. We just have to confirm that it is a valid solution for those initial conditions. So let's verify that those initial conditions are met with that function. So I can show that if I plug in 10 to the function they're giving us, plug in 10, let's make sure we get 50. That would be 300 minus 250e to the 0.2 minus 0 0.02 input 10. And let's see what we get. That is 300 minus 250e to the, that is 0.2 minus 0.2. which is 0, e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, that's 300 minus 250 times 1, which is 50. Okay, so the initial conditions are met, and you earned a point for showing that those initial conditions are met. Okay, so now, if I'm given that function a of t is 300 minus 250 e to the 0.2 minus 0 0.02 t, I can actually find the derivative. That means that dA dt, the derivative of that function, let's find the derivative. The derivative of that constant would be zero, so that's gone. I can use a little bit of a product rule on the second portion, let's try it. So first, which is negative 250, times the derivative of the second, which is this exponential function. Remember, the derivative of that exponential is that exponential itself. So times e to the 0.2 minus 0 0.02t times the chain rule, that inner function. What's the derivative of 0.2 minus 0.02t would just be that coefficient, which is negative 0 0.02. Alrighty, so that shows me that really, if that's my given function, dA dt would equal, what is negative 250 times negative 0 0.02, that is 5e to the 0.2 minus 0 0.02t. Okay, so if they give you that function a of t, you earned a point if you found the derivative, dA dt. Okay, so now I just have to show that this, which we just, uh, this function, satisfies that differential equation. Okay. So, let's start with that, 6 minus 0 0.02a, let's use the function that they're giving us for a, there it is, would be 6 minus 0 0.02, okay, let's verify if this satisfies this differential equation, a, which is 300 minus 250e to the point 2 minus 0 0.02t. Alrighty, uh, let's see if I distribute here, I get 6 minus 0 0.02 times 300, <coughs> which is 6, negative times a negative, which is a positive, and 0 0.02 times 250, which is 5 e to the 0.2 minus 0 0.02t, boom, boom, which is equal to 5e to the 0.2 minus 0.02t. Alrighty, boom, 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 boom. And we verified that, yes, that function does satisfy that differential equation and gives us the appropriate derivative. Alright, so you got a point for verifying that as well. Alrighty. Let's take a moment, read carefully part C, if you would. Uh, the flow of solution into the vat is stopped and the solution is drained. The depth of the solution in that vat is modeled by a function h. Okay? 
So that's the depth of the solution, the height of that solution. Satisfies the differential equation dh dt is equal to negative k root h. h of t is measured in meters, it's the height of what's in that container. t is the number of minutes since the draining began. k is a constant. If the depth of the solution is 16 meters at t equals 0 and 4 meters at t equals 30, what is h of t in terms of t? Okay. So let's read carefully and figure out what we're asked to find. We need to find h of t, h of t that satisfies dh dt is equal to negative k root h. All right, so we're asked to find that function. To find that function h of t, we need to solve this differential equation. Okay, so let's think about how we would solve that differential equation. Okay, this is a cool trick to go backwards to solve this differential equation and find my function. I need to separate those variables. I'm going to get my h's on the left, root h, and my dt on the right, negative k dt. Okay, remember then we integrate both sides. That's the integral of, do you mind if I move that? That would be what? h to the negative one-half dh is equal to, I'm going to take out that negative, integral of k dt. This is a four-point problem, and you got one point for separating the variables. If you did not separate the variables in this problem, you earn zero points. Nothing. Okay, so you get one point for separating the um, variables. Now I'm going to earn one point for the anti-differentiation right here. Okay, so anti-differentiate. Going backwards, I would need an exponent of positive one-half when I add one. Coefficient of one divided by one-half is two. Anti-differentiate that constant will be a negative kt plus c. Okay, so again, you got a point, but both of those had to be correct. And it did say at most, at most two points for this whole problem if you don't have that plus C. Okay, so a point for separating, a point for anti-differentiating. Now I need to actually find that function H of T. Let's use some given conditions up above. When the time is equal to zero, the height is 16. So that's two times, that's the square root of 16, which is four, is equal to zero when I plug in T equals zero plus C gives me that constant of 8. Alrighty, we got a point for that. Nice. And now we're going to solve for k, that constant. Okay, some other given conditions. When the time is equal to 30 minutes, the height was equal to 4. Okay, let's start to plug in. Plugging back in up here, so if h is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2 times 2 is equal to, when time is 30, that is negative 30k plus my constant of 8. What is that? 4 minus h, which is negative 4, is equal to negative 30k. Solve, and k is equal to 2 fifteenths. We're just about there. Okay, let's plug all of this information again to find a function for h. So that's 2 times the square root of h is equal to negative k, which we found to be 2 fifteenths t plus 8. Let me solve for h. I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 half to get rid of that 2. Boom. Square root of h is equal to negative t over 15 plus 4. Let me square both sides, and h of t is equal to, square both sides, negative t over 15 plus 4 squared. And that is your fourth point earned if you can come up with that function for height. 
solve that differential equation. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day.